Hey everyone, welcome back to my garden. And today is May 1st, and it's been exactly one week since sowing these seeds. And as you see, some of them have germinated and some have not. All of the kale has come up and is looking very good. If I zoom you in, you begin to see that it's beginning on to put on its first sets of true leaf. It's first true leaf actually, right there. And the arugula also is doing quite well. Two out of three have germinated. And it looks like it's at the same stage as the kale, also putting on one leaf right there. So I'm gonna come in here and actually replant this one seed right here, being that this didn't come up. Let's actually move some of this coco core over and see if we could see the seed. Sometimes what happens is the seed does germinate and it just didn't come up yet. I don't see anything there, so I'm going to come in here and put a new seed tonight. I wanted to wait a week just to make sure maybe it took a little time and I didn't want to disrupt uh, the cocoa core. And look at the lettuce. It's also looking very good. Same thing, putting on its first set of true leaf. Look at that. You could even see the, the dew on it. Look at all those fuzzy hairs. And looking nice and beautiful. And the spinach, unfortunately, nothing happened. With spinach, I've been doing some research because I've had very low success rate. That's actually one of those plants that likes the cooler temperatures. And a nice trick with that would be to put the seeds into the refrigerator for several days, maybe even, even several weeks before trying to sow them and germinate them and that will really boost your success rate so i'm going to try that and in the meantime i'm actually going to come in tonight and replace the spinach instead of putting three spinach seeds i'm going to come in here and put three swiss sar sorry swiss shard seeds and hopefully that comes up and with swiss shard it's been doing very good for me it actually grows in several different colors there's red yellow green and the neat thing about that is the root system will actually be the same color as the plant which is really cool i really enjoy seeing nice yellow roots or nice red roots that looks really nice in the growth in the hydroponic growth system and especially growing in a little cracky system you're able to really utilize that and come in open this up and see what the root system looks like and in the meantime let's get back to it the plants have begun to put on their first sets of true leaves and at this point this is when you want to come in and give them some hydroponic fertilizer but you don't want to give them full strength because that might actually damage the roots and possibly kill the plant so what I like to do is come in and give it a little half strength and an easy way to do that would basically to just be take a as always so we'll take our one gallon and then we have our hydroponic fertilizer now normally we use when we're mixing fertilizer we would just basically use for vegetative state we use two grams of master blend two grams of calcium nitrate and one gram of epsom salt but being that we want this to be a half strength at the moment an easy way to do that would be to just come in and cut those in half. So we're going to use one gram, one gram, half a gram. And this is why I say the importance of having a scale. It's really important to be able to measure these weights. There's no way you're going to be able to eyeball half a gram. So let's basically come in. We have our three dishes and our three spoons that we always use the same spoons for everything and we want to come in and zero it out and remember when dealing with fertilizer use gloves so like i mentioned we're starting with master blend we're going to use one gram right now since we're going to make half a strength so let's get one gram there we go so we got our one gram of master blend now we want to have one gram of calcium nitrate. Make sure you keep zeroing out your scale. When putting on new dishes, they weigh differently.
there we go, one gram, and now we want half a gram of Epsom salt. Or basically 0.5. There we go. And now that that's ready, we have our mixture ready. We have one gram master blend, one gram calcium nitrate, half a gram of Epsom salt or 0.5 grams Epsom salt, and one gallon of, of water. This will basically make half a strength of nutri nutrients and that's perfect for this stage of plant growth and you don't want to damage the plants so a nice light fertilizer is perfect for this right now so we come in we start with the master blend as always and put in our one gram and let's mix that up Shake it up real well. Now we we're going to put basically our Epsom salts. I always like to put that second. This is half a gram. Okay, make sure that all gets in there. Shake that up real well. And let's put our lastly one gram of calcium nitrate. Now, as I mentioned, it's actually important to give a half a strength, maybe even a quarter strength to the plants in such an early stage of growth. Because when you use just the full regular full strength, at this stage, most likely it will really damage the plants. I've noticed a, a lot of times it will kill the plants. It's called root burn, where the roots will just dry out and turn nice and dark and the plant will just shrivel up in about a day or two. So you don't want to do that. So just to avoid that, nice half strength is perfect. So now that that's ready, we can come in here and refill these reservoirs. So I'm going to empty these and we'll come back in just a moment. Hey everyone, welcome back. So now that we got our jars emptied out, I just wanted to show you real quick. Look at how nice and big these root systems have begun to grow. Look at the mixed lettuce right here. Look at this nice long root growing, searching for fertilizer. And these things are definitely asking for it. Look at the arugula, getting nice and big. Sure, this one, this one's also nice and large. Look at that. And even the kale is doing well. So all of these are looking for fertilizer and it's definitely time to add the fertilizer. So what we're going to do is basically just come in here and take the neck cup out and we have a fertilizer mixed up and we'll basically just come in and pour just over 600 milliliters. I would say maybe around 650 milliliters and that's perfect for basically touching the bottom of the neck cup or just you could come in and just pour until you see that it just covers the bottom of the neck cup. This way it has constant contact and it's able to wick its way up to the plant here. So we're going to pour the fertilizer for all of these plants and come back in a moment. All right, welcome back. Now that we got our jars filled up with the hydroponic fertilizer, everything is at the same level just over 600 milliliters or around 650 milliliters or touching the bottom of the neck cup constant moisture there's a nice little contact and as you see 
Look at that. Look at this nice beautiful root system on the arugula. And this is only a one week progress, so it's grown from up there all the way down there, which is I think <coughs> pretty impressive in my in my view. So now that the plants have their hydroponic fertilizer, there's just one last thing that I like to do. Let's test the PPM. We take our T our TDS meter, turn it on, and this is actually the jar that we what is this one? Yeah, this is the jar that we didn't change, the one that didn't germinate. That's the arugula. So this is just plain water, and let me just show you the difference. Look at that. The water reads basically at just around 80 or 79 ppm. And that's just plain water right out the tap. And the hydroponic fertilizer, let me show you, is basically 450 ppm, which is basically perfect for this stage of growth when plants are nice and young and they're first putting on their sets of true leaves and developing and turning from a young little plant into a nice mature plant so at this point the plants are ready to go back into their home and you want to keep a nice contact of light right underneath but as i mentioned you want to keep it just about two inches away from the seedling and as the plants continue to get big we'll basically move the plant up raise it up higher and higher and we'll keep monitor of the plants and as the plants develop basically we'll wait until the fertilizer goes just about empty or roughly about a week to two weeks as the plants develop will come in and then we'll change out the fertilizer and give it full strength and I'll take you step by step with that and in the meantime I'll give you weekly updates so for those of you like I mentioned that are growing with me if you have any questions leave me down below I'll do my best to answer everything and as always thank you for watching and share with a friend